Great. Well, thank you. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to travel here and to talk a little bit about our canola business um, with this group. When you think of Monsanto, you probably don't think about, uh, about canola or other specialty crops. You probably tend to think about Roundup, biotech traits, corn, soybeans, but not specialty crops. But Monsanto is um, heavily invested in, in canola. Um, we've been in the canola business uh, quite a, you know, shorter than, than our, some of our competitors, but we, we are heavily invested in that, in that business. Um, we market our products under the DeCab brand name, um, so you won't see them in a Monsanto bag, but you do see them in the DeCab um, product lineup. Um, we produce and we market um, canola products, um, hybrids and varieties, both in the spring market as well as the winter canola market. The way we approach this market um, through the development through our breeding is really two pathways. Our first is our traditional uh, canola breeding, um, and then the second pathway is our biotrait biotech trait development. So we have two pathways that run side by side simultaneously until the point at which we decide we're going to commercialize something. At that point, those two pathways come together to produce that final commercialized product. So to start out with our traditional um, breeding program, that program is headquartered in Winnipeg, Canada, um, but that program supports all the North American canola development um, in the U.S. We do have other programs in Europe and Australia, but the Winnipeg office focuses simply on North America. That office has breeding sites, or conducts breeding sites, as well as internal and external testing um, and manufacturing in all of the canola producing regions here in the U.S. as well as Canada. Our biote biotech trait development, um, this is focused on identifying through discovery processes developing and ultimately commercializing value-added traits. The most common value-added trait in canola, obviously, is the Roundup Ready trait. Been on the market for a number of years and is, has been a very successful trait. Um, but this group is looking further back in the pipeline, doing a great deal of discovery work to find other potential traits that would be valuable um, to the customer, to the grower, um, to either help save money or increase yield, protect from diseases, increase oil content, or other areas. So what does our commercial lineup look like? Um, spring canola to start out with. This is our biggest business. Um, Bear, I mean, I'm sorry, Pioneer and DeKalb kind of fight for the second place spot in Canada right now. Um, it goes back and forth year to year. I think we're on our second year in which we're the second largest um, in that market. But our commercial lineup in the U.S. is composed of six um, canola hybrids. There's two early products, those 3003 and 3042. We have two mid-season products, 5145 and 5555. Then we have two full-season products, 7007 and 7042. As we go into this 2013 season, we are releasing a new product. It's going to be 3848. It's going to fall in the early to mid category. Um, it's been a very high yielding in our test when we roll both our internal and external tests together. It's been yielding about 100 percent, 106 percent of the commercial checks. So very high yielding product has excellent um, oil quality, if you'll look at the data around the DeCab uh, canola products, one of our advantages is oil content. We have a very high oil content um, for a non-biotech or just a conventional breeding program um, with, our, with our spring canolas. So uh, 2014 now with our spring canola business, um, we will be releasing a new trait um, pending regulatory approval. Um, there's been a few delays in China, but uh, we do believe we're going to be get the get the approvals in time to at least have a limited launch in 2014 of a new trade. That trade is going to be called TrueFlex. It is a second generation Roundup Ready trade, and this trade will offer a wider application window and a higher use rates. Um, and these two things together, at least through our internal testing, is shown to increase yields overall. You're reducing competition. You're getting better control of the weeds. So the, the, the increased uh, application window. Currently with the Roundup Ready trait, um, you can spray Roundup up to the six leaf stage. With the True Flex, you're going to be able to expand that approximately two weeks to go up to first flower. So you've got a wider application window. If you get caught by weather, you're unable to get in there and spray. With the first generation, the second generation trait is going to give you an extra two weeks to get in there and clean up, um, clean up those fields. Um, use rates. So the tray will also expand um, the use rates available. Currently with the Roundup Ready 1, you can spray um, 
two up to the sixth leaf stage, two rates or two applications up to 11 ounces each, or one application of 22. The TrueFlex is going to essentially double that. You'll be able to spray two shots up to first flower, um, up to 22 ounces each application, or one application of 44 ounces. With the higher rates, we're going to offer um, a wider spectrum of weed control. There's some weeds right now that at the current rates you don't get good control on. By going to the higher rates, um, you'll now be able to control some of those weeds. Um, so we'll, we'll offer uh, better uh, efficacy and control of a wider spectrum of weeds with, with the new trait. And again, that trait will have a limited launch in 2014 with a full launch in 2015. And then coming in 2015, we'll be flipping that whole, that whole portfolio to the new trait with new elite genetics. Winter canola. Um, we're also in the winter canola business. Um, we've been in it for about six years now. Um, we helped start it in the, the high plains. And we offer four products in the winter canola lineup. Um, there's two earlies, uh, 4110 and uh, 4410. And then there's two full season products, 4615 and 4715. The 4615 and 4715 are both CERT products or sulfonylurea residual tolerance in both of those. So if you're placing these products on wheat ground and you've been in wheat for a number of years and you believe you have some residual carryover in there, these products are a good fit as they will not, um, you won't have damage from the carryover residual in the soil. So our winter canola business, some of you may be aware that uh, this past year we didn't sell winter canola in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and there's, there's a couple of reasons for that. But just to kind of back up, talk about what Monsanto is doing with their winter canola business. Um, winter canola across the U.S. is a relatively new business. It's been growing at a very fast rate, but it's still relatively small. But it's reaching that point now where we're having to take a long, hard look at what's our strategy around the winter canola business. So how do we support the business and develop the products that will help you be successful on your farms? So we're going through that process right now. And during this process, the Western sales team um, is also taking a look at, at how they're structured out here to support their entire business, including winter canola. They're a, it's a very big geography, very few salespeople right now. So for this year, they, they chose not to um, bring winter canola in the Pacific Northwest. Spring canola was still available, but winter canola was not. Um, as we finish up this strategy work, we're going to recommend some changes in our resourcing and then begin to enter back into this market. Um, and most likely with new products. In 2014, we will be releasing a new winter canola product. Um, we do not have it named yet. We're still um, deciding on what that should be, but we will have a new winter canola product in 2014. So as I mentioned, we're heavily invested in the, uh, in the canola business within Monsanto and through the DeKalb brand name. Just some things that are also coming in the pipeline. Um, we will be also in 2016, assuming regulatory approval, releasing a TrueFlex Liberty Stack product and a Liberty Link single product um, in the canola market as well. Then right behind that, or say right behind, about four or five years behind that, we're looking at Dicamba product as well. And then further back down in our pipeline, we're also looking at other traits either through um, biotech development or traditional breeding to manage various diseases or um, say pod chatting or other characteristics that will, will be beneficial to the grower. So uh, that's all I've got and I really appreciate your time and I guess we'll take questions at the end. Yeah, thanks, Jim.